And here we have uh, two of um, our uh, leaders in the church, uh, our sister Samra and uh, Doug Moy are with me. I am going to ask them to introduce themselves. We will be talking about um, COVID-19 and its impact on uh, education and the home setting. Um, Doug Moy. Uh, would like to, okay. ሁላችሁንም <laughs> ካስተማሪዎቻቸው uh, today we are going to discuss about um, uh, what it meant to be uh, given a schooling at home for our kids are not going to school. They are staying at home because of COVID-19. And it seems uh, this, uh, this thing is going to continue. Uh, we don't have a, um, the, the set of the time framing when they are going to go back to the classes. But anyways, uh, we are learning this new thing. Uh, that's why we are having a discussion today. Yeah. And uh, Samra, tell us who you are and what you do. Sure. Um, so my name is Samra. Um, I serve at the church as well. Um, currently, I work as a middle school science teacher uh, in Mississauga. So I've been there. This is my fourth year being at that school. Um, and just like everyone else, we are, we have transitioned into distance learning, so online learning. Um, and so I'm hoping today I can share just a little bit of what we're doing from the teacher perspective um, and sharing what we expect of parents and of students during this time. Great. Dagi. Ashi, what a yak action need a limit of Maria, yeah, Samra and Mutayi Katrega. ተማሪዎች በቤታቸው ውስጥ ሆነው የሚያደርጉት ትምርትን በተመለከተ እንዴት ነው ለንቆጣጣራቸው ነው እንዴት ነው ስኬጁል እናወጣላቸው የሚገባው እንደ ወላጅ አንድ ወላጅ ማድረግ ያለበት ምንድነው የሚለው ይሆናል ሳምራ አይ ዋንት ቱ አስክ ዩ ሃው ዱ ዊ ሜክ ስኬጁል ፎር आवर ኪድስ ላይክ ዋት ዴ አር ጎይንግ ቱ ዱ ማንዴ ሞርኒንግ ማንዴ አፍተርኑን ቱስዴ ሞርኒንግ ቢኮዝ 24/7 ዴ አር አት ሆም ዴ አር ኖት ጎይንግ ቱ ስኩል ሶ ሃው ዱ ዊ ሜክ them a simple schedule sure um so actually what's really cool is that peel district school board toronto district school board and now durham district school board actually provides uh expectations of what a schedule should look like so on each of the school board websites they have provided a lot of things and one of them being the schedule um, it really depends on the age group, I would say, um, in terms of how much flexibility you want to give. Um, for example, kindergarten is uh, from four-year-olds up to 10-year-olds, so grade five. This is all considered elementary. So if you have a child between four and 10 years old, there's a set schedule they always follow. So in the case of school, they, have, they wake up in the morning, they have uh, core subjects, English and math, they have a snack, a little bit more of work then they have lunch at 12 after lunch it's usually gym art class um, music class so a lot more elective classes so you want to try to imitate that schedule as much as you can at home 
um, because kids thrive in, in structure. A lot of, they, they really, that routine really helps. So you'll notice that um, they might be more sluggish right now, more tired right now, maybe more cranky, eating at different times of the day um, compared to what they've been doing since September. So it's been eight months or so that they've been doing one schedule. So I would suggest for all parents, and we've told this to our own parents as well, wake your child up before nine o'clock. I know it's a very hard thing, especially if they're up to 10 years old, um, four to 10, wake them up before nine o'clock, eat breakfast, and then focus on the core subjects. And I'll repeat this later as well. So the core subjects being English and math. Um, on the, the school district school board uh, expectations, um, kindergarten um, age group, the only thing that's expected of them is literacy and math. So if you can get literacy and math done, that's you've accomplished what needs to happen. So for structure, you wanna have again, wake them up before nine o'clock, have breakfast, and then just let them know today we're focusing on literacy or today we're focusing on math. Um, try not to do both. Um, the rule of thumb is if, if they're already overwhelmed and it's day one, they're not gonna do the work on day two or day three. You don't want them to hate it so early. Um, and it doesn't always have to be out of a workbook. It doesn't always have to be out of uh, like an online thing. If they're doing literacy in grade one, it's counting, it's adding. So adding with pennies, adding with books, adding with anything. So you wanna have fun with it. Um, so I would suggest general structure, whatever you can do, do it before 12 o'clock. Um, I see that with my own students. Once they come back in after lunch, uh, they're different kids, which is why we do all the art, drama, music, everything else in the afternoon. Middle school is a different beast, grade six all the way up, because now you're doing more self-directed learning. So they're not going to want to wake up at nine o'clock to start doing their work. If they're 11 years old, 12 years old, 13, they're going to want to sleep in until 1 p.m. and then say, I have my own schedule, you know, which is true. They do have a schedule. Um, but you want to set goals with them if they're older. So their structure, I would say, for their type of day, you want to have goals. So if, if they're in grade seven and they have math work, you say, you know what, today is Monday. On Mondays, it's math. Let's get our math done by 5 p.m. So whatever time they decide to wake up, whatever time they decide to eat, it could be up to them, but they know that the expectation is their math has to be done by a certain time. Same thing with English. Um, the older grades have to do math, English, science, and social studies. That's four subjects, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. An easy way to do it. Literacy, math, science, social studies. Um, if, you, if your child is very motivated, you should do literacy every day, which is reading and writing. That is an essential skill that is not like a benchmark. So you want to keep working on that as much as possible. So again, younger years, Structure it as hard as you can by 12 o'clock at least. Older years, give them time limit. So finish this by five. Finish this by five. And then they know on Mondays, I have to get my literacy done. Tuesdays, I have to get my math done. Um, that way they're independent, but they still know that they're being held accountable. Mm. Uh, okay, thank you. That's very good uh, information. Ingrid Samra, Yaska Matechacho Nagaruch. እንደ ልጆቹ የክፍል ደረጃና የእድሜ ደረጃ ያው የተለያየ አይነት ትምርት ክብደት እንደምንሰጣቸው ነው በተቻላችሁ መጠን ወላጆችን ከ9 a.m. በፊት ልጆችን መቀስቀስና ማስነሳት እንደምንገባ በተለይ ከ6 ኛ ክፍል በታች ያሉትንና ከምሳ ሰዓት በፊት ከባድ የሆኑትን ኮር የሚባሉትን ሳብጀክቶች ከምሳ ሰዓት በፊት ማሰራት እንደሚገባ በትምርት ቤትም የተለመደው አሰራር ምንድነው ከሰዓት በኋላ እንደ ድራማ ሌሎች ምስቀላል ቀለል ያሉ ነገሮችን እንደሚያደርጉ ነው ሚድል ስኩል በሚሆኑበት ጊዜ ያው በቶሎ ላይ እነሱ ይችላሉ ራሳቸው ስኬጁል አለ ቢሉ ይችላሉ ቢሆንም ግን ምን ሰራችሁ ብሎ ያንን መጠየቅ እንደሚገባና የጊዜ ሊሚት ማስቀመጥ እንደሚገባ ነው ያብራራችሁ ሳምራ what i want to ask you is like um, is there any place or any resource where parents go for this kind of schedules like just to see uh, like for primary or for the middle school uh, do we have it in the school board's website 
Yeah, they do have um, um, suggested schedules on their school board website. Um, but also, um, to be completely honest, I would highly suggest parents ask the teacher, what is the schedule you have with the students during the week? Because if your child is already used to that schedule, just ask them, can you email me a copy? Could you, you know, send me a copy? Can I pick it up from somewhere? Um, and then put it up. I, I meant to say that earlier. Put the, the schedule somewhere, the fridge, somewhere the kids always go, the cupboard, a table, let them see it constantly. So it's accountable for them and it's accountable for yourself. But it should, there is a general one on the school website. Um, but if you want your teacher, your class specific one, I'm sure every classroom has their own daily schedule. So you can always adopt that. Uh, let's go to the next question samra um our communication with the teachers uh, uh, how frequent do we have to how frequent do we have to contact the teachers is that uh, parents that for the parents for me i don't feel comfortable like to call the teachers now and then how frequent should we contact the teachers uh, that's a very good question so i will tell you something when i started um teaching uh this year I teach eighth grade mostly. They're my homeroom class. And there's some parents I have not heard up from the entire year. As soon as now it became uh, independent learning at home, I have parents emailing me starting 6 a.m. all the way almost until midnight, just with math questions, English questions, science questions. Um, but I don't mind that um, because they're the ones, it's a lot of pressure for parents. And I think I can see that right now, even as a teacher. Um, I have been teaching science for so many years, so I'm very comfortable with the material. But now I'm asking a parent who is brand new to the material, and maybe English is their, not their first language, to have to take it and now to teach it at home. And that's a very challenging thing. Um, I would encourage parents to reach out um, because it helps the teacher also see what's working and what's not working. Um, again, you'll see this on the, each school board's website where they say, let us know if this is not working. Um, because that way we know, okay, the textbook isn't working, we have to figure something else out. So I would encourage you to email uh, teachers often, um, but also at the same time, give it a try yourself. Um, if, it's, if it's a new concept, work with your child and say, okay, this says that you're supposed to um, do your factoring in, in a particular method. Do you already know the method? Because maybe before contacting the teacher, your child already knows the method and they're very comfortable with it. Um, so talk to your child first, figure out what they know and what they don't know. And then after that, then reach out to the teacher. Um, and if you don't know how to use a software or if something is brand new, again, reach out to the teacher, um, but just have grace for them as well, because um, the parents, it's their first time doing this, but it's also the teacher's first time. I've never done distance learning. It's my first time. So when they ask me a question, sometimes I don't know too. So I say to them, give me a day or two, let me figure it out and then let me come back to you. So. Yeah. Uh, 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 I was summarizing what you said. Uh, what I want to ask you is which is the best possible way of reaching the teacher? Is it by email or by making a phone call or by texting? like particularly to uh, for our community 
if they have a phone number, that would be great. I know most teachers are working from home, so they may not offer their personal numbers. Um, I use email, and I know I have specific parents who prefer phone calls. So if they email me or their child emails me if they're older, um, I'll call them back. But I don't have them call me just because I don't, if I ha give them my number, I don't know when they're gonna give me a call, to be honest. So <laughs> if you can email, email would be best. Mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely would suggest if phone call is better, ask them to call you. Just say, could you give me a call between 12 and 3 p.m.? Um, and then the teacher can call you at a particular time. Um, but I, I do wanna say, it, there's never a reason to panic academically. If a child is not understanding a concept, you've tried it, the kid is frustrated, you're frustrated, leave it alone. Come back in a day or two, try it again, come back in a week. If it still doesn't work, then reach out to the teacher. But there's no fixed timeline right now. We're just trying to grow in this. So don't, don't fret, don't, don't stress out. Okay. Uh, Nasta Maritun, the Wulom and Nagagarna, email Madrek, Amara Totilionu in the Mitro. My next question will be um, What about the teachers talking to our kids? Are they uh, supposed to talk with us only, with parents only, or we can make it like a conference call with the teachers, us, and uh, uh, the, the parents, the teachers, and the kids? How should it be? Um, it really depends. Uh, it depends on the age of the child. Mm -hmm. um, for if your child is, is in grade one, six years old, the communication will be completely between the parent and the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, my students, for example, are in grade eight. Mm -hmm. I email the parents every Friday an update of what we're doing and what we're going to do the next week. But in terms of day to day, I only communicate with the students because uh, they have a school account, a school email. And it depends on what school you go to, especially high school students, they should have a school email account. And that's how the teachers communicate, just for like simple clarification. Parents do have access. Um, if your school, it really depends again, but a lot of schools are using something called Google Classroom. Um, and it's what we use just to see what work is being assigned and everything. In that, parents can, uh, be added to it to see what the progress is of their child mm -hmm. uh, but that is school specific so you really have to ask what is your class doing what is your school doing right now um, in order to and how much you want to be involved some parents don't want to be involved in what's happening they just want the work to be done mm -hmm. so if you are a parent what, what 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 do you mean by that that uh, some parents don't be don't want so to be involved but i have i have parents who are emailing me, asking me questions, they want to understand the concepts as well and then teach it at home. Um, I also teach an older grade. So I do have parents as well who just say, um, has my child finished what they need to finish? They just want to know that it's complete. Mm -hmm. So there's a group that want to understand and teach and then there's a group that just want it to be done. There's nothing wrong with just wanting it to be done, to be completely honest. Um, but if that's what it is, then some parents, communication with them will be a lot more minimal. Um, and maybe they don't want to be a part of Google Classroom. So I asked them to ask them to ask Admetto Betta Maracutor, and Nasu in Satona, yet I do school board to admit I do to Mercury Toch, Hinden Gaza, Lam Sali Google Classrooms, Yan Bermetakam, Minin de Mikana, what did you treat in the Derasu, Mindera Jalai, and Dalumauk in Maschin, a Gaza. Salale, Yan Nagaroch, the Mindetakam in the Mikaban, we were Takam and Dalabno. Let me go to my next question. I was given uh, so many uh, like websites and like Kahan Academy and things like that. Uh, which ones uh, you prefer? 
personally. Oh, I can tell you exactly which ones I prefer. Um, I should put, I have them on my uh, Facebook. I listed it. Maybe I'll put it under this video as well. Um, there are some websites that are very expensive for subscriptions that are making it free right now. Uh, and I'll tell you those ones. So if your age, if you have a child between age three, as young as three, all the way, I would say to six or seven, when they're just uh, slowly getting stronger with reading, there's a website called ABC Mouse. Um, and it is excellent for phonics, which is like reading, just basic reading, understanding sounds, sight words. I mean, if you're three, even your child is three years old, I would suggest starting to use this website. Um, but it's really great for primary years to focus on literacy, um, identifying their name, identifying words, all that kind of stuff. Khan Academy is great. Um, it's great for science. Actually, they have great science material on there. It's great for uh, math as well. Um, it shows different ways to solve one thing. Um, I would also say using something called PHET. Um, that's from the University of Colorado. They have simulations to understand uh, physics, biology, and chemistry. So if you are in anywhere from grade four all the way into university, they have simulations that help you practice physics concepts, biology concepts, chemistry concepts, which is not a very common thing to see. Um, another one is Scholastic. Scholastic is usually a very pricey website, um, but they've made it free right now during this COVID-19. Uh, it's at home, so if you don't have access to a library, uh, they have so many online books available. Um, what I can do is I'm gonna link with you what the Peel uh, District School Board, they made a whole list of resources. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say those are my top three, um, just because math, you can do Math Playground is a great website. You can do code.org to learn coding. There's a lot of fun things to do, but I, if I have to push one subject to really get in, it's literacy. It's just reading and writing, making sure that the kids, whatever age from three all the way to university, that you are practicing your literacy skills. እንግዲህ uh, የተለጋገረን አንሳለው የትኛው ዌብሳይት ዲኬድ ጥሩ ነገር ይገኛል የሚለው ነው ከዚህ በፊት ያልሰማውት እሱ አሁን የገለጸችልን መሰረታዊ ነገር ከዚህ በፊት ብዙ ገንዘብ ያስከፍሉ የነበሩ ዌብሳይቶች አሁን ግን ከዚህ ከኮቪድ 19 በተያዘ በነጻ ስለሚሰጡ እነሱ መጠቀም እንዳለብን ነው አሁን ይዘረዘረቻቸው ዌብሳይቶችን ከዚህ ቪዲዮ ጋራ ሊንክ አድርገን እናስቀምጣለን ወላጆች እንግዲህ ወደዛ ነኛን ዌብሳይቶች በመጠቀም ለተለያየ ትምህርት አይነት የተለያየ አይነት ዌብሳይቶች አሉ እነዛን በመጠቀም እንድንጠቀም ነው በጣም አጋዥ የሆነ ኢንፎርሜሽን ነው what i want to ask you next is what about parents helping other parents like we have neighbors uh, people from our community like i've got a friend who is a teacher he's not teaching here but back home he was a teacher but he has got a good understanding of math and the other things. He helped me a lot, like putting the schedule for my kids and uh, giving them some, uh, some tutorials. So what other parents can do? What can they do like to get assistance from other parents uh, uh, or community members? Mm -hmm. um, that's a great, great uh, question. Um, I would strongly encourage even this right now, Zoom, having parents just sharing what are they doing at home, what's working, what's not working. Um, as much as the kids need encouragement and need to learn, parents need encouragement. This is an additional extra uh, barrier, um, burden that has come, right? Um, and it's a new thing, especially if you have multiple kids. Um, Zooming, so like video conferencing, phone conferencing with other parents to encourage, to figure out what are you doing that's working? What are you doing that you think is not working, that you need another idea? Um, way before the academics, this would be really helpful even to build relationship in the community. And you don't want to strain your relationship with your kids at home too, right? Because you're bombarded, they're bombarded. It makes for a very tense uh, environment. So um, I would strongly suggest communicating with parents um, just regularly um, and then figuring out who in the community is really good at Google Classroom or Google Drive, you know, not even the academics, but just how to how to go through the internet, how to figure out what's good, what's not, how to put on parental um, blocking to keep them from going on websites that they shouldn't go on, mm -hmm. um, which is another very big thing about online safety. Mm -hmm. 
um, and just learning like that. Um, and then doing this, I really encourage this Zoom, what we're doing now. Um, what I see is parents now having their kids go on Zoom with other kids and doing homework together. Even if it's not the same homework, they feel, they feel more motivated to do their work when their friends are with them doing work. So what I see now is I see kids going on Zoom, 10, 11 of them, muting the button uh, and doing their own homework. Um, and that seems to uh, also help keep the community um, and motivate the kids to get their work done. Ingridi, tiyake ena baro, wala joch arsivarsachin indet marra dada tichala deloch tichala batala ye subject la tichala ukat kala chola jistan dito kazama dito tichala uye mira uno, but am asfal lagi inda hone na wala joch arsivarsachin marra dada tinda la bili jochin ba bia kano batize uye wala joch tichala ba bia kano batize aun emin takam bat zoom emi balo na ina kaba takam etala ju wala joch na etala ju bi joch Abro gabto ibit sara chon masrat inda michulu na uye galat sa chusamra. Let me go to my next question. Like our kids like to play games, video games and other things at home. For now, they are not going out to the playgrounds. Yeah. And they are putting too much pressure on us to let them play games. Do should we put any limit? Or uh, what is the best practice? That is an excellent question. Um, I am not a parent, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's my role to answer that because I, I can speak as a teacher. Of mm -hmm. course, I would like them to not play video games all day, um, mm -hmm. but I really think that is house by house and that mm -hmm. is uh, parents' parenting styles. I know some parents are saying still no video games except on Saturday. And some parents who are giving their child, you know, an hour a day, and some kids who have their video game glued to their hands because they're on it all day. So I think that's a parenting thing. So I don't want to, uh, I don't think my hands should go in there. But I think a parent would really add good value to that question for sure. Okay. Uh, Maybe to stand out, look, video game or just like you game or something like that. Like all of them, we matter. All of them now. So, all of them now. Master Marine, you dust Marine. That's why we use video games. We are watching the old Alpha Legum. We are not going to be legal. And then, all of them, we are going to be watching the old Alpha Legum. We are not going to be legal. And then, all of them, we are going to be watching the old Alpha Legum. We are not going to be legal. And then, all of them, we are going to be watching the old Alpha Legum. We are not going to be legal. And then, all of them, we are going to be watching uh, let me go to my next question. Sorry, can I add one, add one thing to that though? Um, mm -hmm. If you are going to take away video games, it's really hard, but make sure you have something else for them to do. Because it's uh, yeah. right now. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, video game uh, my next question would be at the end of the year, at the year end, how mm -hmm. are they going to be evaluated? Like That's my a very good question. Yes. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so what's going to happen is very interesting what they're going to do from primary years. So anyone who is from age four, so junior kindergarten, all the way to the eighth grade, most of their mark will be taken from what they performed between September and March 13th. Whatever they got in term two, so the term that just finished before March break, that mark is going to stay the same in their term three report card unless something extenuating happens. So I'll say that again. So every mark that they have gotten from September until March 13, that is the mark that will stay the same in their June report card. They will still receive a June report card. It will be the exact same mark as the one in term two, unless for some reason they have disappeared off the face of the earth. They didn't do one task, one assignment, absolutely nothing. In that case, the teachers, it's the teacher and the school's responsibility to communicate with that family before the report card comes out in June. Otherwise, that mark will be exactly the same. Because, to be honest, it's very—it's going to be very hard to assess uh, formally. Um, I know my school is doing that, but we have a, a bit different structure. So it—you can't put the weight on the child now to learn the material that hasn't been taught. 
So. እንግዲህ ሳምራንድ አስቀመጠችው እስከ ማርች ያላችሁት ሰጣቸው ግሬድ ነው የሚቀጥለው እንግዲህ ጁላይ የሚሰጣቸውና የሚሆነው እስከ ጁን ባለው ጊዜ ታውን ጀብሮ እስከ ጁን ባለው ጊዜ ፈጽሞ ከአስተማሪዎቻቸው ጋር አኮሙኒኬት ማድረግ አቁሞ ጥፍት ስካላሉ ድረስ ያ ግሬድ እንደሚሰጣቸው ነው ያስቀመጠችው እንደዛ ከሆነ ግን ትምርት ቤቱና ወላጆች ትምርት ቤቱና አስተማሪዎቹ ሐላፊነት እንዳለባቸው ነው ሳምራ ያስቀምጥኩ ሌቢ ጎ ቱ ማይ ኔክስት ኳስቸን ኦ አይ ዲድ ሶሪ አይ አይ ዲድ ሜንሽን ሃይ ስኩል ሃይ ስኩል ኢዝ ኖት ዘ ሴም ስትራክቸር ኢፍ ዴ አር ኢን ሃይ ስኩል ግሬድ 9 ቱ ግሬድ 12 ዘር ማርክ ኢዝ ጎይንግ ቱ ቢ ዘ ስቱዴንትስ አር ጎይንግ ቱ ቢ ኢንከረጅድ ቱ ኢምፕሩቭ ዘር ማርክ ኢፍ ዘር ማርክ ድሮፕስ አ ኢትስ ዘ ቲቸር ኤንድ ዘ ስኩልስ ሪስፖንሲቢሊቲ ቱ ዎርክ ዊዝ ዘት ቻይልድ ቱ ሊፍት ዘር ማርክ ሶ ሃው ሃው አይ ዲድ ሃው አር ዘይ ጎይንግ ቱ ቢ ኢቫሉዌትድ ዞስ ኢን ሃይ ስኩል um those ones are going to be through something called uh cumulative uh activities so uh, a big project or a big assignment something that doesn't require just memorization because that can lend itself to anything else um but they're going to have cumulative evaluation so whether a big project they do this already in grade in high school right now um some sort of summative a uh, cumulative evaluation and that's going to be what's going to help them change their mark but their mark is it says on the website whatever the teacher does it's supposed to be conducive to their learning which means it's supposed to be something that will help them raise their mark not drop their mark okay let me go to my next question as a teacher do you think that we should pressurize or we should pressure the school boards to give supplement classes do you think this is a lost season or a lost school year uh, the months like uh, the ups and downs and the psychological mm-hmm. and the other things yeah uh, back back home in ethiopia uh, sometimes you send students back to the same grade they call repeating the same class yeah uh, so uh, is it going to have a long term effect on their academic performance in the future uh that's a good question um i mean the the easy answer is we never know what will happen um but the more uh, tangible answer i don't know if this will help but so the way in which the school year works september to november is term 1 september and october is generally review from the year, year the year before that's why students tend to really succeed in their term 1 report card they have really good grades they're really confident term 2 november to march which is right before march break that is all new material and this is really where kids struggle because now it's just learning new material across the boards Term 3 is about 5 weeks I would say of new material and the rest is review of the entire year. It's a cumulative review. So if there's uh so it's not a total loss in that the term that is completely full of new material, they have learned it. So they've got the bulk of their learning for this year, so it's not a total loss. Um the 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 loss really is is the psychological effects on the children. We don't know what this is going to look like them being home all the time, being isolated all the time. a uh, time will really tell um and then for the other subjects that's why we're really pushing for literacy and math um the people i think who are going to have the hardest challenge to be honest i would say is grade 12 students um because this is their preparation year before they go to university um so they'll receive the credits but it's unfortunate that some of the skills that they could have built on in this term uh are not going to be there the five weeks i would say of learning uh እንግዲህ ሷን እንዳስቀመጠችው የአመቱ የትምርት ግዚያት የተከፋፈሉ ናቸው የመጀመሪያ ሁለት ወሮች እስከ መጀመሪያ ሶስት ወሮች የቀዳሚውን አመት የሚከልሱበት ነው ክለሰ አይነት ነው በዚህ ጊዜ የይዘው የሚመጡ ሪፖርት ካርድ ብዙ ጊዜ ሰክሰስፉል ሆናቸውን የሚያሳይ ነው እስከ ማርት ብሬክ ያለው ከዛ በኋላ እስከ ማርት ብሬክ ያለው አዲስ ሳብጀክቶችን የሚማሩበት ነው ይሄንን ተምረውታል ከዚህ በኋላ ያለው እንግዲህ ቢልድ የሚያደርጉበት ጊዜ ነበር ይሄንን በቤታቸው ሆኖ እንደሚያደርጉ ይጠበቃል እንግዲህ በረጅም ጊዜ የሚመጣውን ውጤት ያው ወደፊት የምናየው ይሆናል 12ኛ ክፍል ያሉት ልጆች ወደ ዩኒቨርሲቲ ለመግባት በሚፈልጉበት ጊዜ እንግዲህ ያው ማግኔት የነበረባቸው ነገሮች አግሬዱን ቢያገኙ ላያገኙ ስለሚችሉ በእነሱ ላይ ትንሽ ጣና ሊኖረው እንደምችል ነው my next question will be like when they are sitting at home without going out uh, without doing other things uh, 
I think they are losing their temper. Sometimes uh, they are misbehaving, quote unquote, misbehaving. Sure, yeah. uh, so wh what can we do as a parent, like you are mm -hmm. a teacher, and uh, how can we calm them down, or, or how can we make them understand the situation? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get lost, and they. Uh, I feel with when I talk with my daughter, I felt that she's not grasping the whole thing. She's not understanding what is happening in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how, uh, how can we uh, explain to them or uh, express to them what is happening? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. Uh, the, uh, the World Health Organization actually has some resources for parents to explain to kids about COVID-19 in a simpler way. Um, but the reality is, I mean, these kids are... 10, I mean, they've been alive for 10 years, right? So their, their span of understanding is a lot smaller and their world now has completely shifted, right? Um, everything they've known about routine is so, so, so important. And when routine is flipped, you, you know, it's like when a two-year-old misses their nap time. Uh, they, they're, they can't think straight, speak straight, you know, they, they can't communicate what they're feeling. So it comes out through frustration or anger. And that's a two-year-old. Now imagine if you have a 10 year old, 13 year old, it'll come out in a different way. Um, I've just been telling my own parents, uh, the kids I teach is even 20 minutes every day, 15, 20 minutes, go for a walk in the area, get fresh air. It will do wonders to you. Um, use that time to just talk to them. Um, if they don't wanna talk on the walk, that's fine. Um, but getting fresh air is helpful. The kids go outside three times a day elementary students, first recess, lunch recess, and third recess. So from going three times a day to not going out at all and staying in an in a apartment or in a house or whatever the case is, um, it's gonna start to get to them and that's gonna start happening. Um, they won't understand, some might, but a lot won't. So the best thing I, I've been suggesting parents is getting that fresh air, having that structured routine, um, and don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing a good job. It's hard for them, it's hard for you. Um, and we're all doing this together. And then doing the Zoom calls, Zooming with their friends from school, um, finding a way to communicate with people um, by not leaving your house. Um, then they can still have that attachment to their school friends, that attachment to their church friends or you know, whatever the case is. Uh, uh, Astagari wono agenjot andan dina garuchi lina kaku chilalu kamil now gan izana cho bunot ay mila sabta nastal lela samra nastal kunatam yalem ke na drijet WHO ihinen COVID asal ayen batamalak kata lehas anas lijot bak allalu maglas sila bichi debat mangar ya zagal jo matera sila alla yannen gapten inden nagen wainam yannen gapten uh, explain uh, uh, basically these are uh, my questions Samra. I want to uh, to call upon his guests uh, and maybe uh, I, can I add something um, okay. before you call as guests uh, this is a very practical thing um, that I just wanted to let you know um, and for parents to know what is the expectation. So if your child is JK to grade three, all that is expected of you between now, excuse me, all that is expected of you between now and June is just literacy and math. That's it. JK to grade three, they said, do not, you can add science, you can add social studies, you can have fun, but really the two main fields is literacy and math until grade three. They, and they say a maximum of five hours a week mm -hmm. the child should be doing work, JK to grade three. So four, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, eight-year-olds, maximum five hours. If they hit the five hours, leave it alone. Um, that's all that they're going to retain. That's all that they're going to do. So JK to three, literacy and math, five hours a week. 
grade four to grade six is also five hours a week, grade four to grade six. So primary is JK to three, junior is grade four to six. And they say five hours again, but you wanna to stick to literacy first, math, add science, add social studies. So science and social studies should be added if your child is in fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, five hours, that's it. Um, grade seven and grade eight, you wanna have 10 hours a week. They should be doing work 10 hours. Um, this includes uh, in order of what they should be focused on, literacy, math, science, and social studies. The same thing as grade four to grade six, except they should be in five hours. So two hours a day for five days. Um, and then high school is grade nine to 12. That should be three hours per week per subject. So three, six, nine, 12. I mean, it depends if it's semester or non-semester, they will know. Um, that should be three hours per week per subject. Um, all this to say, um, I know you were highlighting about online learning. Um, teachers actually should not be providing you only work that goes online. They should be providing you they should be providing families with work that the child can do on paper, that the child can do at home orally. Um, the, the job of me as a teacher is to encourage them to do their work, five hours worth of work, but to encourage a lot of it, yes, will be online, but you have to try to figure out ways to get them off the computer. And that's the challenge that us teachers have. And you know, we're pulling different ideas. Um, some schools I know, some schools in Scarborough actually that I'm connected with, they're sending math packages home. So they're saying for the month of April, this is your package. After that, we will mail you a package for the month of May. So no online at all. If you need help, you can go on Khan Academy, but we want to focus on distance learning, not just online learning. So distance learning just means we're far from the school, but we also want to use other resources and we have to get a little creative with it sometimes, but you want to make sure that you're not having a child five hours a week sitting in front of a computer. So I just wanted to highlight that. I hope you are going to put uh, these materials online mm -hmm. so that um, uh, parents can uh, get the materials and sure. the hours required and things like that. Now, when you take a matter like that, you see, you take a lot of programs in order that online you make a matter do not. And the kaflacho, and the yedmi acho dereja expectation of chalu. Neza expectation of chalu. To correct and another, you know, at the beginning, class was talking about uh, uh, the the different level parents are uh, like. Some parents have good understanding what's happening. Some parents uh, are just yeah. not connected to what is happening. So yeah. like by now, if a parent doesn't get a call from a teacher or a school, and if parents, uh, parents are not aware of what is happening, what do they have to do? The fastest way I would say is check the, the board website because it will tell you the timeline of what is happening or what should be happening. Every school, every parent should have received already an email from their school, some sort of email saying, this is what we're doing, this is the plan. Schools should have started this week um, on a very rare occasion. So if your child is uh, ESL or special needs, they may be starting next week. But other than that, everyone should have received a communication. If you have not, email your school. Um, we, we are, I, as far as I know, every teacher is still available on, through email. Email your school um, or check the school board website, whichever school board you're a part of, public board. And Gidea, Skahun dress, well, I just want to tell you the results, you know, Minigano, Nagaruga, Avro, Sakravati, Rualo, Lajo Chalum, and Alba, and Dado Lajo Stagmo, Batalay, Yamaknet, Buzuma Rejal, and Lacholino, Rusil, Michel, Minamadra, and the Bacho Miro, Ya Bordu, Ya Kavavi School Board. Website which in the Malekatuna, Mindarajala in the Tedrasa in the Auku, no Samra Yasasa with Chalungi Walajut, Yakavavin School Board website, Mindarajala in the Tedrasa Melai 
እንደተገኘ እነኚህ ነገሮች እንትመለከቱ ነው ያሳሰበቸው እስኪ አሳሩ ዩዘር ያፕ አም ሂር ለምሳሌ ያጠፋው በት ምክንያት ኖት ይወሰድኩ ነበር አም ባክ ቱ ስኩል አም ለርኒንግ አይ ማይሰልፍ ፍሮም አ ፓሬንት and um, i didn't think it was going to be this hard but bezi samnt inyam yemokkerno le uh-huh. mastamar lejachilnenna engidi techno be technology i consider myself to be average gin tinish yemejemero step tinish kabar neberna we're blessed to have people like uh, you dagi who can ask the right questions <laughs> and uh obviously people like samra who knows the right answers so we're blessed to have a community like this i think we should do these things more often um that's what it means to be a community that's what it means to be a church and that's what it means to be um a healthy group of people that uh grow in every area of life um we want this to be uh, available uh, thank you dagi ehen an idea majemmeria izo yemetaw dagi no we we added um uh, samra to this so this originally was uh, dagi's um plan so thank you for uh, coming up with this dagi antel tayike yemefelgo neger menalbat bewiyitachin mahal yezellalnachu negeroch kallu ሁለተኛ ደግሞ ይሄ እንግዲህ ልክ እንደ ለሌም አሁን ለትብርት ቤት ነውና ወላጆች አሁን ወደ ኋላ የተነጋገርንባቸውን ነገሮች የተጠቀሱት ማቴሪያሎች some documents uh, some um, teaching aids and other things um, raised by uh, Samra የት ማግኘት እንደሚችሉና እንዴት እንደሚቀመጥ እዚ ዌብሳይቱ ላይ ወይ ምን ምን ነገሮች የት እንደሚገኙ ምክንያቱም ይሄ ሪኮርድድ ሆኗል ወላጆች ገብተው እንደሚሳሙት ተስፋ እናረጋለን እና እንዴት እንደሚያገኙት ይሄንን ነገር ተስፋብራታል ሹር ሹር በብዙ ነገር ነው የተነጋገረ ነው ኔራሴ ብዙ ነገር ጽፋ ያለው እዚህ ለማስተዋወስም ከባድ ነው የሚሆነው ሁሉም ነገር ግን እዚ ቪዲዮ ሊንክ ውስጥ we will put one link and now i will ask uh, samra to um, she should to put together maybe a small document with one link right under the video እና ወላጆች ከቪዲዮ አስራ ያለችውን ሊንክ ክሊክ ቢያደርጉ እነዚህ ሁሉ ሪሶርሶች አቬሌብል ይሆናሉ ፎር ኤግዛምፕል ፎር ሚ ዘ ስፔሻል ዌብሳይት ሳምራ ሜንሽንድ ቲንግስ ላይክ ካን አካዳሚ ኦል ዘ ፍሪ ሳይትስ ዳት ዳት ሺ ሜንሽንድ ዛሬ እሱን ስፈልግ ነበር እኔ and i couldn't find a, a, a site that would work for our four year old so um but now i know <laughs> what what i would be looking for so we'll make that available uh, for you um also uh, there was one thing that we touched on um earlier as we we're talking how to talk to our kids um in in this season uh we have done another um a video with uh pastor linda pastor linda has been working with children for about 50 years uh in a sunday school uh, setting uh so kaswaga yadaregnonum interview um dagim translate yadaregaw yamarnya portion alle usun adrigen kezih video ga betekatatay release na adergawallen selezi in the package hulettum available yonal maletno ka pastor linda ga yallo conversation it will be more on menfasawina um, psychological yihon own conversation and it adergen no converse madreg yalleben and it adergen no sele mot sele hazen sele virus minnnagero hatsanatoch emilaw neger nusu address mitaregaw endet no min tselleyo endet bilan no mazaf kulus minnanebo endet adergen no minnatsnanacho እንግዲህ አሁን ፓስተርም አስተማሪም ሆኖ አለ ወላጅ ማለት ነው ስለተገባ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ያንን ቪዲዮ ከፓስተር ሊንዳ ጋር አቬሌብል እናረጋለን thank you so much um, i think uh, what i just said samra is that a pastor linda has addressed the pastoral um, component and you have addressed for us the educational component i'm so thankful for dagi for making this available for us with all the great questions um yeah. he has asked all the good questions so i have just been taking notes as a good father should so <laughs> i think this is it for me um if anyone else has no other comment i guess uh, i will press record off and we'll be done any comments tell parents at the end like 
I mean, you'll say it nicer than I will, uh, <laughs> but just like take real, like there's no rush. There's no pressure. Take the pressure off of your heart. Take the pressure off of your mind. You know, you're doing the best you can. The teachers are trying to do their best they can. This is history, right? This is a pandemic. It's not something that anybody could have predicted um, or prepared as a, as a parent or as an educator. So just telling parents to just, you know, let your heart be at ease. You're doing what you can do. Focus on, do what you know and stick to that and just do it well. Don't worry about trying to teach them the most elaborate new equations. Um, do what you know, seek help, be honest about seeking help. Um, and that's it, right? You know, we don't know if there's going to be summer programming. That's what we're already talking about right now at our school is are we going to do summer school for everyone? Make it optional for everyone to attend. Are we going to have extra summer programming? Because <laughs> so we don't know what it's going to look like in the next, in the next couple of months, but parents just need to, you know, don't worry. You do your teacher's license. You don't, there's no pressure on you. Just you know, do what you can do and then let the teachers do what they can and we'll pick it up in the summer, we'll pick it up in September, you know, be at ease, be at rest. Thank you. I don't know, you say it nicer though. I don't know if you say it nicer though. I don't know if you say it nicer though. I don't know if you say it nicer though. I don't know if you say it nicer though. I don't know if you say it the evangelical bonum was in a church and Betelaju, Mnatuch, and Bandu, so which in Giddy, hey, which is a way to Sabasum, Pasavi, the Ruch, Yamina Sudat Gizenona, Doata Rarge, and it Nadar Twatla, Nadar Go, the Sasatla, Nadar Go, Pastor Linda Mansitana, but I finished Doata Ravalam and get Kalijo to get a Sabasman. Yamanadar Gonit, a lot of Nazi Monagi, the Samaraka, Finnish Negar Belena, as that chap. Giddy Berget, the children's ministry at Kavis, Zuzal Koyun, and Baba Lajin Nathan, the experience selling him, so the Zarebzu Lalil Chalal Hogan. I think Andamanak on a German Dino, his Anatoch, Kamer Coast Achinim and Nadar Gon Negar. እና ለነሱ ለማሳየት ብለን የምናደርገው ነገር ይለያሉ። እና ምናረገው ነገር ከልባችን እናድርግ። ምን ጸልይ ከሆነ ከልባችን እግዚአብሔር እንደሚረዳን አመነን እንጸልይ። ስንሰበሰብ በዚህ ነገር ምክንያት በጣም ኤክስትራ ፕረሸር አንፈጠር። እግዚአብሔር በአምስት ደቂቃም በአምስት ሰዓት ምጽሎት ይሰራል የሚሰማ አምላክ ነውና ረጅም መሆን የለበትም ጸሎታችን ግን ኦነስት ይሁን ኡነተኛ ይሁን ድንጋጣያችንን ብዙ አናሳያቸው ለነሱ እምነታችንን እናሳያቸው እና ምናደርጋቸው ነገሮች they should not be a reflection of our uh, insecurity እኛ መፍራታች ተፍረን ፈርተን ተርበትበተን ረጅም ጸሎት ምንጸልይ ከሆነ ያውቃሉ they sense the the, the pressure እና ረጋ ብለን እግዚአብሔርን እንግዲህ አመነን እግዚአብሔር ስለሚሰማ ከልባችን ብንጸልይ ይማከራሉ thank you very much Sabran, but I'm a second ago, Lajot Kazibitum, and then interview like Chatalo, the church by Chalalo, Xavier the Mundesian, so with the Mahabra Sabatinus, and Xavier in Michigan. Xavier